But it looks like for this Ruby user group in the meetup, it's not the way it works. So people <laughs> always show up. So, yeah. Um, so a couple of questions. So the first one I forgot, but that was really important. Uh, I will recall that and I will ask you so to raise a hand again, maybe somewhere in the middle of the presentation. but. It's kind of disappeared from my mind right now. Uh, second, <laughs> second question <laughs> is uh, who of you were following all those AI trends in Ruby? Not just heard about AI, but really looked into what's happening with Ruby and AI. Like, raise your hand if you know anything about like Ruby and AI working together. Okay, that's, that's not bad, I would say. Um, <coughs> But the, the trend is that there is a couple of people kind of driving the whole thing, making Ruby be suitable for AI, specifically for large models. And uh, <clears throat> even like last RailsConf and probably Rails World, they have dedicated topics to, uh, to AI. And there is a couple of funny gems that evolving at the moment that anybody can use. Um, and they're like very cool. So it's like very easy to start doing any kind of like integration, play with it. The only problem is that everything that people like nowadays talking about Ruby and AI related mostly to open AI. So it's like a chat GPT integration or any custom GPT integrations or any other models that are suitable to run the same um, kind of a interface. Uh, my topic is a little bit different. Maybe it's too kind of early to say, but the the thing that I'm going to be talking is how to make work Ruby and LLMs local. So you don't need to go for OpenAI. You don't need to pay for like GPUs, renting any infrastructure. So like your laptop is good enough to experiment and kind of good enough to build something. So like. Everybody knows that, for example, when Raspberry, uh, when the Arduino was invented, everybody thought that it's just for prototypes and people won't be using that in production. But after like 10 years, in fact, 90 of, you know, IoT stuff built on, uh, on Arduino, even though that wasn't by design. So maybe that's, that's kind of the next trend. Um, my talk is, is separated for actually like two parts. The first part is about the LLMs itself. Oh, I need to start timer. Uh, how much time I have actually? Well, you can time. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, well, I will have the standard lecture one hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's separated for like two parts. The first one is about the LLMs itself. Oh, three parts. The, the, this, this uh, second part is how to make those LLMs work together. And um, I, I brought two tools that we created recently that are open source, so I'm gonna do like a short demo. If we're running really tight, I briefly show, and later on, if anybody wants to, uh, to get more details, we can do uh, like look through, through the lab. So, <clears throat> That's kind of it. And um, I think the main point for, for those slides, I will be switching between like browser code and everything else. So if you have some question, like raise your hand immediately and ask it because otherwise, as I still do not recall what was my first question to ask. So 
Uh, yeah, don't uh, like don't hesitate to to uh, to stop me and ask your questions. <clears throat> so okay, um, the the whole story uh, started recently last year. Have you heard about the this huge leakage of uh, Facebook Llama? So it happened um, in February, but this article from March eight saying that um, as soon as Facebook started giving access to researchers to the source code of their uh, uh, LAMA, L -LAMA uh, their LLM, like after one or two weeks, it's immediately leaked to the internet to the torrent <coughs> network. And uh, Meta started fighting uh, with the internet uh, claiming they are rights that it's not supposed to be shared. So they were fighting to torrents, they were fighting to researchers, they were trying to find any kind of links for, for those who shared that. <clears throat> and, um, and so this fight uh, was kind of like <coughs> during a month or something. So from February it leaked uh, until 8th of March they kind of started doing all, all the claims and exactly at the same time uh, on a GitHub, the, the dude from Bulgaria published his first version of, um, of this repo called Lama CPP. Uh, raise your hand if you know what is this. Have you heard about Lama CPP? Okay. So, and as you can see, the initial, um, the initial commit to Lama CPP, actually not commit, but the initial release to Lama CPP happened almost two days after the, the claim, the Facebook claim started like cruising the whole world. So what happened to Lama CPP? So Lama, uh, Meta's Lama, even though it was leaked, in order to run it on your like local computer, uh, you need like a huge GPU. Uh, I think the minimum was 64 uh, gigs of, of RAM to, to do something. So like even it's leaked, for example, if, even if I would like bring it here for you, there is no point to run it like on one computer or even like on two computers. So what this dude did, so um, he kind of changed the execution model uh, for this, uh, specifically for Meta's Llama. And instead of using GPU, he switched the execution to CPU. And because like uh, using some kind of optimization during that, he made it suitable not for like 64 uh, kind of geeks, but with different strategy for inference, which means that instead of using the whole model, you can cut the model into a chunk that's more suitable for you and like run on your local machine. So he published that. <clears throat> People started playing with Llama, and after some time, and it was like it made a huge, uh, you know, buzz that like some cool open source stuff happened. Somebody called this uh, uh, George uh, Gerganov a new Linus Torvalds because uh, he appeared from nowhere and he created like so cool stuff that nobody's from like Facebook and Meta could create. And Meta said like, okay, like if you're that smart and if you guys from community doing that great job that we couldn't do, keep it open. Like we're gonna recall back all the claims, so we're not gonna be fighting for uh, you know leaking the llama use it in the community, like, we find that you're building your own inference engine with Lama CDP. And, uh, and that was like a huge win. So if you were following like the latest release of uh, Facebook Lama, uh, Zuckerberg, he said like, we gotta be always open source. So this kind of hacking thing made kind of turn over for the way how people uh, consider uh, large models. So they started thinking like models could be open. Everybody can use it. Probably the same question as a database. <clears throat> so, what is Lama CDP? So, actually, uh, that's a C repo. And um, if you go and check it out, so you, you can like, download it. Uh, you can, uh, I mean, build the build the whole application from, from the source code. But let me, uh, I'm not that, what's the, who knows what's the main file in C++? 
Yeah, yeah, I know that took me, but <laughs> yeah, let me see. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, if you're going to be looking into that. You can open make file and there should be a name of there. Yeah, that's very hard. Um, yeah, this one. So, uh, if you imagine uh, like C++ code style, it's, um, it's like the one file implementation with uh, no, that's not the. Oh, they started kind of splitting that. But like, like the original file was like almost uh, twenty thousand lines of code, so they and I splitting it all together. But uh, when you get um, uh, when you get this uh, uh, Llama CTP, you can build the the binder, like something that you can execute on your on your machine and. Um, for uh, for the future use, uh, there is like a binding in the Ruby. So for those who want to experiment with Llama CPP, you can kind of easily go and uh, find gem that was created in Ruby, same as uh, for the whole list of other languages. So as you can see now, there is like a lot of native bindings that you can use as uh, like libraries for whatever you want to use. <coughs> and uh, it's at this stage, it's not only for um, Facebook Llama, so Llama CPP as an inference engine, uh, it supports a number of different uh, large models. So you can see like all Llamas, plus Mistral, plus Grok, Bird, and a lot of other things. And uh, the community still, and everything that was created within one year. So it happened like literally last March, and until that time, so they created a lot of great stuff. So, how to make it run? So you clone the, the, the source code, you, you build requirements because uh, there is some like magic happening for, uh, for the LLMs, and uh, uh, after you build it, and it's quite pretty straightforward, <clears throat> you need to get the actual model. So you need to get the, the source code of the model. How many heard, or how many of you have Hugging Face uh, account? Okay, a couple of those. So Hugging Face, that's the, people call it GitHub for LLMs. So Hugging Face, uh, and I kind of, if you're playing with any, uh, you know, AI, I would recommend you to create an account there. At least you can have like a unique name until it's taken. So you don't need to have like Sergey1985 uh, or something like that. So Hugging Face, have a lot of models that are public that you can play. You can get, you know, some insight about this. So, for example, uh, for Llama CPP, we can check. Um, let's say this one right, right over there. And uh, what, like, it looks like a GitHub actually. So it has. Uh, it's open llama. It's like a kind of uh, convenient version to play with. And uh, when you see here uh, the, the the model files, it's just a number of kind of large files, like with ten gigs, like three three point five gigs files that has like all the things together, like all the weights, everything like is built in there. So uh, as soon as you have like llama CPP on your machine. You need to download, and probably this dude is not that convenient. You need to download uh, the model file to your like local machine, and uh, if you're gonna use like Git for for large files like Git LFS, it's a disaster. Like if your internet is not that perfect, you you're gonna like there is no way to pause and like re reclone it back again. So of course you can clone it as is using just like the, the Git, GitHub interface, but um, until now, even like GitHub starting building their like uh, models hub. So now on GitHub you also can store models, but I wouldn't recommend you do like this. So like I would suggest you just download those those files like straightforward. Um, and as soon as you have it, the last thing. Uh, you need to uh, convert those binaries to GGUF format. So GG probably stands for the initials of the, this dude. Uh, 
because his name is George Gerganov, so GG. So that's kind of like he, he is he, the, the format that from the standard way of like using models, uh, you need to kind of convert it into the suitable formats to execute it on the on your local machine. Uh, <clears throat> I did it already, but let me show you from from terminal what we have here. So we. If there is any questions, again, feel free to, to to ask. So if we go to uh, Lama CPP, uh, there is like a models file uh, folders, and uh, I've already downloaded this Open Lama, so we can check Open Lama. And as you can see, um, this is like nine gigs file and three gigs that I've just downloaded. And when you run the local converter from Llama CPP, it uh, it literally uh, gives you just a new file that a little bit bigger. So it combines both of those that here. So it gives you like 13 gigs GUF <coughs> file that now is suitable to be run uh, on uh, on your local machine. Uh, I'm not going to run it because, like this size of uh, of, of the model, uh, it's it's quite like sufficient enough, but not MacBook Air still. So, uh, and the next thing with this model, uh, what we want to do is we want to quantize the model. So, like uh, quantizing the model uh, inside of the Llama CVP, there is script where you can specify which models you want and uh, in which strategy you want to have. So for example, again, I did it already, so we can experiment with that. Uh, from this initial like 13 gigs file, uh, we quantize this model for four bits and uh, it gives us like, the, another binary file. So <clears throat> this binary file, now uh, only three and six gig, File it and it's executable. That's almost the, the last part for the theory, for, for the <laughs> boring part. So, uh, what quantization mean? So, uh, we have like a large model. In order to, uh, to launch this model, we need to put it into the operational system. More model weights, more operational uh, memory you need. And uh, the, the model inside has uh, float numbers to represent their weights. So for example, 32 bits weights would represent like this number. If we quantize it with 16 bit, we just keep 16 bit for the number. So we kind of uh, cut it in half. And we can also cut it like with one bit. So it's gonna be like zero, uh, zero, one, just to like the representation from one bit after the dot. Um, what I, yeah. Go and you, when you convert to this three and six gig, you use four bytes, so it's four, four, four bits. Four bits, yeah, four, bits. four okay. yeah, 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 four, it, it's like the dimension of the float number. So how many, how many, how number, many after the, how many digits you have after, yeah, after the, the dot. So when we have it, we, we go going to have like the final version, which is quantized at this stage with like a four bit algorithm, like with four bit strategy, what I did now. And it's kind of like gives you 30% of the whole size. So it's not 13 gigs, it's now three gigs, which means like having three gigs of RAM on your laptop would be sufficiently enough to, to run this model. Good, that's all you need to deal with the model. So now your model is one file. So literally the, the open llama, the whole LLM that can do all this magic with uh, almost the same level as like ChatGPT is over here. So that's the file. So what we're gonna be doing next? So next <coughs> we have native, uh, native extensions. Sorry, um, I didn't realize that when you start slides on Obsidian, it starts with the very beginning and you need to kind of uh, so I'm not going to use uh, Obsidian for, uh, for slides anymore, like specifically in this form. But, um, 
So now we want to like execute this file somehow. And uh, using like native extension for Llama CPP and, uh, and the Ruby gem called Llama CPP, we can, uh, we can experiment with that. So we need to have, let's go and see. So that's the source code for uh, for the uh, Llama CTP gem. You can build it like from the source, or you can get the latest version. Really doesn't matter. Uh, <clears throat> what matters, like I have like one uh, one simple example uh, here. <clears throat> Good when in the demo folder, no demo file. <laughs> okay, um, we're gonna find it just a sec. <clears throat> Probably I put it into examples. Let's uh, let's use the default one. It's it's also good enough. So so we um, yeah we can get improvisation. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> not a problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm doing that for the first time. Sorry. So um, you're doing good. Sorry, the best. Yeah. So uh, what uh, what it does here? So it requires the jump. Uh, initialize the, the model itself, and um, and then we need to um, and and then we need to specify the, the ex execution file, the one that we just created. So uh, we go and. Um, and yet just created binary file from uh, from Lama C. Models, uh, maybe I have it here in my hands. No, no. Okay, no issues. Uh, open Lama. So we take this binary file with Open Lama. And um, and we need to give this probably like the full path uh, to the file so it knows what to execute. Okay, so then it's uh, it's initial. Like, at this stage, it's still a file. So and as soon as you start executing that, it it gathered the context, it gathered the sizes of and the number of tokens, the, the sizes of the uh, of the context that is going to be shifting to to the model and back. And uh, yeah, you can kind of make the, the call. So the context for the call is like the the question, so the prompt that you you want to ask it. So let's say, what is the distance from the Earth to the Moon? Okay, <coughs> so we, and we, we're ready to, to execute this guy. So what it does, it goes and uh, executes the, the Llama CPP uh, wrapper. So the one that was going to wrap the, the initial file. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and it gives you something back. OK, uh, it's not the, not the answer that we would like to have. 
Let's make it a little bit nicer. So, so we know where is the answer. Here. So as you can see again, as soon as the process started, it's allocated 3 gigs of RAM. The, the model was RAM Cloud. Uh, it uses CPU, and you can see kind of the, all the buffers and the sizes that it uses. And, um, and it gives you something, right? So OK. So I bet it's quite correct. Who knows the right answer? It depends. <laughs> okay, three eight four, right? Three eight four. This give us three eight four at least here. Uh, a little bit not right here. So uh, no, no, it's very no. I know. No, don't look at this one. It's not. <laughs> but it's meters. Okay. Yeah, it's meters, right? Okay. So it's hundred like, uh, like thousand times more. Yeah. So what, what does this mean? It means like the, that the model is suitable to something, but of course the, the, the precision of the data is like 70% less because we cut a lot of like exact information, but it's suitable. Like we, we can test if you, if you know any other good questions to ask, mm -hmm. let's, let's try it out. So, for example, uh, what is bigger uh, or, uh, or what? I don't know. Like, do you do you have any good? Any write good? write a piece, but ask for work. ask for any uh, capital of any country, like okay. uh, France. Any capital. <laughs> 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 That's, That's for every country. I like it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, that's correct. <laughs> okay, what is that? You should not ask for you. What? That, that, that's a statement. On planet Earth, we have countries. Uh, <laughs> France, France. Who else? At least it works, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, like, and in this case, the the complexity of the whole tasks and, and making integration, like, of course, the model is small, but uh, the the whole process of the interaction interaction is different from calling OpenAI API and use it as a black box because you never know what's happening inside. Here, you still have no idea what's happening inside. You get a lot of fun, but it's at least one file. Right, so it's, it's not going um, like anywhere. Okay, so that's for the bindings. Uh, along with that, uh, so you can use Jam. You can use native extension that is that is built for that, and uh, it has a number of like methods already. Apart from that, because uh, like, let's get back to to Llama CDP. Uh, as we have already, so those models like the initial models, the model that was converted to GGUF, uh, to George format. Don't call it that, that's my fair guess. I have no idea why it's GGUF, but I, I bet it's initial. And uh, this binary file that we kind of cut 
uh, for four bits, the, the, uh, the, the floating point. Uh, if you want just experiment with different models and you don't want to use it like as a piece of code, uh, in Llama CPP, uh, they have built-in Llama uh, HTTP server, uh, which you can, for example, run like this. Uh, let's ask the same question to the server. Yeah, let's do, but oh, you want the same model because like, I have a number of different models. So for example, uh, let me see where I I, I, I just uh, said about it because I guess on server it's better, it's less quantized, so maybe the answer will be more precise. Okay, so the, to run uh, to, to run the Llama server, we need to have, so when you build it, you, uh, you have this executable, which is Llama server. Uh, let me see if it's still. Okay, uh, but the Llama server uses, still is uh, running locally, so it uses the same model that we used previously. If you want. So Llama server is just a script. Okay. Uh, in this case, if you want to test it out, let's test it, this, uh, test it out this exactly the same model. So you choose lo like Llama server as the, the script, script executable, and the model that we use was uh, this one, but, uh, oh, I remember that I didn't want to do it like, this one is 16 gigs and my Mac is gonna be die, so let's, uh, I have not quantized another model, which is called Olmo, it's also like open source model. Uh, let's see, yeah, and this one also quantizes four bits. So uh, same size but different models. Let's let's see what what the server uh, the server version would, would give us. As you can see, it's kind of like the Ruby script and Ruby bindings utilize it exactly the same uh, exactly the same initial process, but uh, instead of uh, getting just like one line answer, this one gives us like a little bit more. So let's see, it's gonna be the port. Yeah, so as soon as you run this one, uh, it gives you this interface with Llama CPP. So that's the dude, which is running. And the newest version, they also introduced like a super cool new UI, which you can also enjoy. Uh, it has a, kind of like a number of settings that you can do, but what interesting for us is the, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's do give me any capital from any country. So it kind of does the same thing, so it goes and starting to calculate, but this one is a different model. Let's see. I feel like I am the capital <laughs> of any country. My country. Okay. Capital of your country. France. <laughs> yeah! Oh. So this one is way more better. Okay. So this one is this this one seems like we, we're gonna test it with ChatGPT later on this one. <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah, to play with the the uh, the point for Llama CPP server, uh, of course it can be used like this one. So if you if you need like your own chat, and you can test out different models, you can use web interface. But <clears throat> the the main idea for uh, for Llama server and bindings and the main difference between them. So using bindems, mm -hmm. you can instantiate the process on the go. So the server is up, it gets back the response, and it dies. Mm -hmm. If you use server, you can have the whole like processes running in loop, and the server has API, and you can kind of call the server using just standard REST API. So you can in, like interact with a Llama CPP server just using like a normal uh, HTTP uh, requests. The third point that uh, I would like to bring, so we have Llama CPP, Ruby bindings, native extension that gives you the chances to work like with the code, plus it has web server, so you can access any suitable model through the API. And uh, after a half year of all those things happening, Mozilla uh, created their project called uh, Llama File. So um, it's open source, it's 
literally called the Glamour file. And uh, what Glamour file does, it's um, <clears throat> for GGUF format, it wraps it up with an extension called Llama file, but in fact, it has all the execution parameters and all the tuning parameters for the model. So everything that you need to run this model without any pre-configuration, like you no need to know like almost nothing. You, you have like Docker file. It's a very good uh, analogy. So you have Docker file, you have no idea what's in that and you don't want to know. You have Llama file, you have no idea what in, what's inside of that and you probably uh, don't want to know. So um, how it works. So when you have uh, like you, you clone this llama file thing and uh, um, and it gives you the converter. So converter accepts GGUF format and uh, it takes the model. Let me show you the, for, for this one, for example. Uh, so models, Olmo. It has like GGUF uh, format, and uh, if we go and um, uh, llama CPP, llama file, and if we go and say, okay, now take this this exactly model that we just run from um, uh, from llama CPP and uh, create us uh, llama file. So all we need to do here is uh, specify, I don't know if you guys can see or what key, see, see this one well, but I will try to. So we, 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 go, we go into take the, the converter and, uh, and we need to say where is the, where is the initial model uh, is located. So it's located in Llama, Llama CDP, models, Olmo. And um, yeah, there is probably, yeah, so this file, GGUF. And later we, we need to say um, where we want to get uh, result, model, or just here in the in the folder. So when you when you run it, it takes the, the configuration from GGUF and um, the GGUF file and it pre-configures, uh, you can pass a number of parameters. So if I don't pass anything, it takes everything for, for default. And as you can see, it now created me a new file called llama file. So it's executable at the moment and uh, it's also like same almost size for a gig. And what I can do, I don't need to do anything. I don't need to install like anything. I don't, I don't have to have like Llama CPP sources or real, like anything, I just run it. And uh, inside of the, the Llama, uh, 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 Llama file, it has Llama CPP built in, so you can have exactly the same web server and exactly the same processes running. The only thing is one a little bit outdated, so they do not have this fancy button to get new UI, but it still works exactly the same. So what is the capital of Poland? There we go. Okay. So those are three options at the moment. So if you want to run your model, you need to find the source code. Uh, you have Llama CPP, which you can build your own, and you convert the source code of the model into GGUF format, and then you can use uh, rather bindings or uh, of web server. Uh, you can have Llama file if you don't want to do like almost anything. You just, if you download Llama file from, let's say, Hugging Face, you can run it on the go, so you don't need to uh, set up any, um, any other like, libraries. It's, everything is in there. 
and you can kind of experiment with it as you want. So that's uh, kind of the first part for the theoretical thing. And um, this, now let me um, let me show you a few things that uh, that we are building now, and uh, and how we kind of use Rails applications and the models under the hood. Uh, so the first application uh, before uh, it's probably worse to to click until this slide. Let me see if I'm not missing anything. Nice. It was a very good presentation, but I like it. <laughs> okay, so that's the question. Um, what is the most popular programming language in uh, this this year? What do you think? Do you know the answer? English. <laughs> hey, you knew that. Yes, the, the English is the most popular language, uh, programming language, nowadays, because... Um, a lot of things that are building for the AI, uh, building multi-agent system where kind of like two models or model and application need to interact with each one, and they use like human language for that. So they program itself. If you heard about like prompt engineering, it's a new profession happening. So people kind of prompting everything, and kind of it's it looks like coding, but not really. It looks like being an engineer, but also like not really. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, so one problem that uh, that that we're uh, we're solving it's uh, it's called uh, let's wait a little bit. It's also like it's only the second slide that I wanted to show you. Um, yeah, it's um, the tool that can utilize all the models, build prompts, and uh, keep those prompts uh, in a history like in the version order. So we call this tool Llama Gator. So it's like Llama and aggregator of everything. And uh, that's like open source tool we released uh, really recently. Uh, let me see, where is that? Yeah, this one. Um, so what Llama Gator does. So Llama Gator is, is Rails application. Internet. So cute icon. It's a little bit not that great. Yeah. And this one. So um, let me clean up a little bit things here. Yeah. So when you have the the llama gator to um, from the repo, it's just like a Rails application. Uh, you can play with it, or if you want, uh, you can uh, just run it. From uh, from the Docker container that's in there. Let's try to do that. Almost there. <laughs> yeah, <this one. clears throat> um, yeah, what it what it gives you when it's up and running. So it gives you uh, options to add uh, any local models that you have, and uh, you can send those models uh, the same prompts and compare which model gives you better results. Uh, at, at the moment, the model, uh, the, the, the application itself works with Llama CPP, it also works with OpenAI and all Llama. So I think we're going to be adding more stuff in there. So for example, if we have, um, like, let's, let's start with the, the simple one. Uh, I, because I was preparing everything just just before the uh, the presentation, I, I messed up the setup, so we'll we'll have to do in the setup right right here. So let's do like quick open AI uh, integration. Uh, do not photo the, the security key here. You don't need that. <laughs> Trust me, that's not the key you're looking for. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, that's good enough. Right. So you provide OpenAI and uh, it gives you configuration. So uh, you can say which version of OpenAI uh, open you want. 
and uh, also like configuration scenarios, which, which one you want. And uh, when you create the model, it registers here, then you create a new prompt, uh, capital of friends, you can say what is the capital of friends, we're creating prompt, and uh, then we, um, we can create uh, an assertion. So we want to test out for how, how better is this one. Uh, capital of friends should include pairs. And we can go and create like a test run. So we hit new test run, we choose which prompt, we choose assertion, and we choose uh, the model that we've just registered, so OpenAI. Uh, we create a test run, it takes the prompt, sends it to, uh, to the model, and as soon as it's ready, it saves you the, the result. So you can see the capital of Francis Paris and the assertion passed, which is cool and, and great. Um, I have already added a couple of models, so the, the Ulma with 8 bits, uh, it's like a little bit bigger than we tested, we tested uh, 4 bits, uh, so let's, let's get it running. So in order to get it running, the, the configuration uh, that we have, we, we need to distinguish the port uh, on which the, the model is going to be run, and, um, and the model itself, so let's gonna find this Ulma model. So all the model 8 bits llama file, don't need to do anything. Specify the model, specify port, so we can run multiple, which 8001. So model starting, we have the server running, and uh, from, uh, from our application, as soon as it starts, we will be able to query this, this model. Okay, there we go. So it runs this llama CPP server automatically which is good. Then uh, we go to the test runs, create new test run. We say, okay, the, the prompt is the same, the assertion is good, and we need to test it for, for those two models, OpenAI and Olmo 8 bits. So we select two models that we want to test, and it creates a new run. So it sends the, uh, sends the same prompt to two models, and waiting for the results, and uh, giving us assertion. So this one, Worked well, this one, not really. <laughs> and here you can go and compare your results. So, the chat GPT gives us <laughs> the same answer. The Olmo didn't do a good job here. So not that great. Okay, then. Uh, why there was more questions in Olama, uh, uh, Olmo? It was like he answered yes, and then he started talking about school. Uh, it hallucinates from time to time. That's so it it asks his himself a question. That's, okay. that's just like the model gives you some not that good uh, answers or results. The again the temperature that's specified for the model uh, for almost specifically is zero point five. Uh, you can tune it up, you can say like, if you don't know, say I don't know. Instead, it's not gonna be yes. But uh, let's test it out. I think it, I, I've added this Meta Llama, the, the very latest and super cool uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook LLM. So again, this model is also quantized with eight bits. So it's cut, uh, it's smaller. Uh, let's see what's, uh, what size this model. Uh, fits. So um, I have four bits and eight bits. So eight bits of the latest Facebook uh, LLM is eight gigs, which is not bad. But let's see if it does a decent job for answering uh, this question. <coughs> uh, lately, my friend told me that if you are asking this uh, GPT models and you want to create a chatbot, then you have to start the conversation with them, with, with this chatbot, and told him to continue this conversation, and then break on every time when the 
GPT wants to write as a user, as you, and ask for another prompt. And this is the one of the ways to speak with them. Like, the, the model wants to discuss with themselves. And I, I do that all the time. So if I don't know the answer, like, I'm asking myself, like, if I'm doing right things or not. Yeah, but maybe that's why uh, the model asks after the Paris question, the question to themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what was that? Yeah, what was that? What was that? Of Paris, I totally agree. So, uh, let's test it out. Again, the prompt is here. Uh, we, we're going to create a new test run. Uh, we, we select prompt, we know the assertion, and uh, we're going to test GPT again, and we're gonna use the uh, the Facebook one. So let's see how they're doing uh, against one, two, and another one. So OpenAI is ready. Netalama is still thinking. It's not that fast, but it's twice bigger than the, the previous one. So it definitely takes some time, and sometimes my, my laptop is like frozen, so you cannot get anything working on that. So it's giving some answers. Finally, a little bit more. Um, There we go. So we can go and compare the result. Ooh, oh. Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it's his great answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of you know, having fun, right? So it's answering questions itself. <laughs> giving, giving some answers. So, um, yeah, and as we have those assertions, we, we decided, okay, because like, uh, what was the use of this application? Uh, and like, why we created that? First, just to show how easy it could be integrate local models to Rails applications, so you don't need to use any like OpenAI. If you need to do some funny stuff, like a stupid chatbot or whatever, you don't need to use like OpenAI, you can just download any model that you want. Like, and easily integrate it to, to like Rails application. Second, uh, because there is like so many different models, and if you want to find which model would suit you better, for example, if we're building for you know, this assistant who can help us travel to Europe, uh, we, we can figure out which model would work better. For example, like Meta seems like Meta with 8 bits seems to be doing like a decent job. The third point is, as, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I have no idea you can extend the solution to ask OpenAI if answers from the different models are okay. Thank you very much for the question. Let's do that right now. So, um, so OpenAI, uh, OpenAI validate. Uh, what do you want to validate? The same like Paris, capital of France, right? Uh, capital of France. The wrong case. Just. So we are like in the, oh, that's, that's not, uh, we need assertion, correct. So open AI, validator. So here we can select any model that we have already because like all models are under the same hood. So you can redirect those questions to any models that you have as an assertion, like as a validator. Okay, so let's ask ChatGPT and in this case, just we we're like we need to pre like pre wrap prompt result from the one model that we have to to the model with what we expect it to give us back. So just give answer in one word uh, true or false. Uh, what is the just give answer one word. Or false, whether if the answer, if the following answer to the question uh, 
capital of France is correct. And uh, we create this assertion. Now we're gonna do test run. We the prompt is the same, capital of France, validator, the, as the assertion we choose open AI. So the result from the model that we are have local uh, is gonna be sent to uh, to open AI. And we are questioning uh, meta lama, so the Facebook lama. So we're gonna create this run. So first it goes and asks uh, is do it. So it should give us something back. It might take a little bit of time. Okay, while it's uh, it's getting back. Uh, yeah, that's exactly the point. And in this case, as you can have multiple models under the same hood, and you can have multiple prompts that you can store, for example, if you're building your like a chatbot or any system that is like a multi-agent, and you need one model taught to another model and validate some data. So for example, users send you like a PDF, one model parses the PDF and sends to another model with a specific format, like a JSON format, for the particular things. You can say, okay, if I'm updating this model to the newer version, I need to keep this prompts between those two models in place. So that's kind of like the, the tooling. Um, okay, so interesting. So now we have like zero validation and we can see. Uh, okay, so ChatGPT, thinks that's the wrong answer. No, that's, uh, it, it says it's, it's failed. Let's give the, I don't know, maybe, do you want to have, uh, so what I have here, I, I played with like a distance to the moon and uh, it might be, let's do assertion, one more assertion just to see if it's possible uh, to, to kind of pass, open, AI moon. <coughs> uh, we say this one. Mm -hmm. Maybe the previous answer of ChatGPT. Maybe she didn't understand what you wrote. Maybe yeah. Let's let's see. Uh, we can validate just just a second. Uh, or true or false because it's what assertion should return. It's yeah, it, it works like this now, uh, but uh, yeah, <coughs> we'll, we'll be doing better later. So it's just like one month's baby uh, application. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, let's have another test run for distance to the moon, moon validator. Uh, and we can run this one, the test run. So the, um, another point that is happening to this one, because like the, the web interface is nice, but the functionality is, is, quite, uh, is quite straightforward. You connecting models on one hand, prompts and versions on the other hand, and you can like, kind of mix them as you want. And like you, UI UX is not always great, but, um, we building the like the, the supporting tool for uh, for this llama gator. We we call it like uh, R spec llama, so it's going to be like ex uh, uh, extension to R spec, which which can operate on the DSL for uh, for calling those models and validating responses. So for example, um, yeah, if we let's see if there is any results already. Yeah, there we go. So now it worked. So um, the the result is still quite. It gives like a lot, but ChatGPT figured out that the the answer was correct, and uh, and you can see the the full response for what uh, what ChatGPT gives you back. So that's. Uh, that's kind of like you you can see from from the inside. Yeah. So just like wrapping up, um, 
full navigator, as I said, uh, so it's open. Anybody can get it. So you, you can play play the, this Rails app, or you can use it as a boilerplate. But the next things that we're building is the, the RSpec extension, where you can use the same level of, of abstractions like with different models, but you can kind of do calling to, uh, to the application, to the data that you have, or the models that they are getting back from uh, from uh, from your like a backend, so um, I can show you like pretty quickly. I know we're running a little bit like longer than expected, but um, our spec. <coughs> so yeah, so it looks like this, and uh, on um, and you can play with it. So it, it gives you like the the library. You you provide the endpoint to the Llama Gator, so it use Llama Gator as a backend, and it extends the number of helpers that you can use. So for example, uh, you can say like, use this model with this quantization, provide those prompts, and later on you can uh, kind of question it with, uh, with different, even like a chain of, of questions or logic, and, uh, and build your own assertions. Um, I think that's probably it. Yes, so like all in all, playing with AI is fun. It's like uh, a lot of things happening every day, so to, to keep everything like on your radar is very hard. But uh, when you start playing with something, at least like having it local, you know exactly like that you own that and you can rely a little bit more than you rely like on some like APIs or something uh, living on uh, OpenAI. And it's easy to integrate, it's easy to contribute, and I kind of encourage everyone to, even like you don't need that for your like day-to-day -day work, to at least like look inside and familiarize yourself what's happening in there. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to show you around and what, what we've done. So thank you very much. <laughs> if you have any questions, Marius, that's up to you. I can answer questions or... Maybe one question. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I have one moment, but I can ask that later. Anyone, please? <laughs> 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 right, so, uh, thank you for a great presentation and introducing us to that world. I have one question, because you've shown that you can wrap a model inside of a server interface, and there is this one gem in Ruby, like Ruby OpenAI, which is able to connect to different different uh, well, models, interfaces. Do yeah. you use that to connect to that server? No. Or do you use uh, REST API directly? No. So, uh, yeah, the, the OpenAI Jam uses, like, they've standardized the, the API interface to yeah. call to, yeah, and like almost everybody's using that. Uh, we use it, like, the, the examples that I show from the Jam, it's like native extensions, so you are not using any uh, any APIs or any HTTP protocols, I bet they are sharing sockets, like uh, system sockets to, to exchange tokens. Uh, for that, because there is like a native extension, there is no need to put it like on a higher level to, to HTTP or whatever. Uh, for uh, for using the, the Llama Gator stuff and the, this RSpec Llama, uh, we don't use the, the OpenAI gem neither because it's like three lines of code, like implementation for calling uh, like Llama CPP API and parsing back responses. Like, mm -hmm. no need. Sure. Uh, all right, thank you. Cool, yeah, thank you guys. Yeah.